All right, so in this video, I want to describe how to use the D5 Tanavasugana diagram. And you're going to want to be using this if you're dealing with a D5 octahedral complex or um, a D5 tetrahedral complex. Remember, the tetrahedral complexes are applicable when you um, have 10 minus whatever Tanavasugana diagram you're talking about. Here we have 10 minus the five diagram, well, 10 minus five is five. So it ends up being applicable for both D5 complexes. Okay, so um, first, just to review the uh, attributes, the axes of the Tanabsayana diagram, we have the energy axis here. This is the energy of the transition going from zero, which is the ground state to all these excited states. Um, and it's in terms of B, which is the rock op parameter. It's a measure of electron electron impulsion. More about that in another video. But this is unitless because we're dividing by B and we have an energy divided by the same energy unit. So it gets to be unitless. So a value of 40 here means you have um, an energy of the transition that's 40 times the value of B. And B will vary depending upon the transition metal cation. Same idea with delta. Delta is um, your ligand field strength. So it's the gap between um, your EG and your T2G um, in octahedral or your T2 and your E gap, your delta T. So it can be delta O or delta T. It's just called a delta to be generic here. Okay, so um, now that we got that squared away, let's talk about um, you know, specific values, the three different regimes of these uh, different ligand field strengths. The first is when you're at zero ligand field, and there you have this uh, sextet S symbol. And then in excited states, you have these other letters. These are atomic term symbols. If you have a ligand field strength of zero, you don't have any ligands. You just have a bare um, transition metal cation with, with in spherical um, symmetry. So maybe something that might exist in the gas phase. Um, but that's why you have these atomic term symbols. Those turn into molecular term symbols. Once you incorporate a ligand field set, set and get into octahedral or tetrahedral symmetry. And so um, the ground state is sextet A1 um, or A1G if you're in octahedral. Um, but <clears throat> uh, this is for when you have relatively uh, weak ligands. So this side of the diagram um, is your weak field ligands. And we call this the uh, high spin side of the diagram. And it's the left side of the diagram with respect to this line, which is a spin crossover point. Once you get to a high enough field strength, um, your spin will actually change because now um, it is more favorable for you to be low spin and avoid electron electron repulsion um, and instead just populate your, your next, your higher energy electrons um, into that higher energy molecular orbital. So we'll walk through that in a second here, but this right side of the diagram, right side of this line is your low spin side. And this is what we would, would be with complexes with what we call strong field ligands. So you can use the spectra chemical series um, to determine whether or not you have a strong or weak field ligand. I have other videos on that, but things like cyanide, carbon monoxide, those are very strong ligands that favor low spin complexes. And you can see you have a lower spin on the ground state. You have a doublet instead of a sextet. So um, for this slide, let's talk about a high spin case first. So we're gonna be, what we're gonna be talking about on this side is applicable for the left side of this diagram for either high spin D5 octahedral complexes or high spin D5 tetrahedral complexes. Let's first um, think about this ground state of sextet A1G. Why is it a sextet? Well, we have the crystal field splitting diagram of octahedral with three T2Gs and we have two EGs. And we have a relatively, um, weak field ligand, which means we have relatively low delta O. And so when we populate our five electrons, we're gonna be putting the first three unpaired, and then it's not that much more energy to put electrons four and five in the higher lying EGs so that we can avoid um, the penalty of 
pairing electrons and having added electron electron repulsion. So now we have, um, what is the spin here? Well, the spin multiplicity rule is given by 2s plus one, and we have a spin up, spin up, spin up, spin up, spin up, five spin ups. So each spin up is worth plus one half. So that gives us an s of five halves. So two times five halves plus one equals six, and we call this a sextet, which is why we have sextet A1 there. This would be the ground state, therefore, it would be um, actually sextet A1G. We have to add a G because this is the proper term symbol um, for octahedral. We have the G because octahedral has inversion. Um, so we have to say the symmetry with respect to inversion. G means garata in German, which means it's symmetric with respect to the inversion operator. Very similar thing for the TD case, but now we have to recall that the TD crystal uh, field splitting diagram is a little bit different. It's actually kind of flipped. And you have E on the bottom and, and T2s, not T2Gs. There's no inversion um, in the tetrahedral point group. So you drop those Gs and your high spin again. And so you're gonna populate electrons three, four, and five in the upper level. And again, you got five unpaired electrons. So you have a spin of six. So you have a sextet again. Your sextet this time is gonna be sextet A1, no G. So again, we're on the left side of the diagram. You can see if we're on the right side of the diagram, we're gonna get a doublet, you're gonna be low spin. Weak field ligands, relatively low values, delta divided by B. All right, now we can start looking for spin allowed transitions. Um, and what's quite interesting here is what is a spin allowed transition? We need um, a sextet A1G to something with a sextet, meaning the spin doesn't change. And if you look here, there are no sextets. There are no um, sextets in this diagram. Now, people, students oftentimes get confused here because if you look at this, you say, well, wait a second, there's a sextet A1. No, 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 you'll be double counting there. You have to follow this A1 back. This A1, sextet A1, is the same as this sextet A1 running along the baseline, running along the ground state, right? So um, this sextet A1 exists in a high spin, a low spin on the low spin side of the diagram. It should become the excited state. So you can't destroy uh, states when you're going to, to one spin to the other, when you cross the spin crossover point, it's just this ground state become an excited state. And so, and you can see the same thing uh, here, you know, it's just an important thing when you're interpreting this. This is the uh, uh, ground state for the low spin side. And then you can see it becomes an excited state, this line following all the way up here, right? It was a doublet and an origin that originated from a doublet I, free, uh, free ion term. But that's one state there, all in blue. And this in red is one state. So what this means is that if you look up here, right, there's no other sextets. So there's no spin allowed transitions. No spin allowed transitions. When you have high spin D5 complex or high spin uh, D5 complex that's octahedral or tetrahedral. Now, does that mean you won't have any peaks? You won't have any intense peaks in your UV vis spectrum. However, all these other peaks, now you will be able to see the spin forbidden ones, but those will have a much lower molar extinction coefficient. So you actually get very weakly absorbing bands. So um, compounds such as manganese two plus and iron three plus, if you talk about uh, you know, octahedral complexes of those, for example, they tend to be very lightly colored. Manganese um, two plus compounds are, uh, uh, complexes are just this very light pink color because you don't have any spin allowed transitions if it's high spin, okay? Now, if it's low spin, then you're gonna talk about the right side of the diagram. So let's do that next. Um, so let's now uh, just remind ourselves, this is high spin on the left, this is low spin on the right, and we are um, going to be talking about low spin. We're on the low spin side of the diagram. 
But this is going to be applicable again for D5 octahedral complexes and also D5 tetrahedral complexes when you're using this diagram. Ground state is a doublet T2G. Why? Why is it a doublet? Well, we can go through this again. T2G, this time for low, gen, low spin, and EG for octahedral. Delta O. Delta O here is relatively large vis-a-vis uh, -vis the high spin case where we have weak field ligands. Now we have strong field ligands. So you're going to put your three electrons and your fourth and fifth electron here you're going to pair. Why are you going to pair it? Because this is too high in energy. And so in a low spin case, it's saying this gap is too big. The EGs are too big. I would rather take the electron-electron repulsion penalty and pair them, right, for jamming in two electrons into the same um, molecular orbital. Okay, and what about the TD case? We have T2 and E, and we have a delta T, and the same similar thing here. We're saying delta T is relatively large because we have low spin case. So we put one, two, three, four, um, and five. And in both cases, you see we have one unpaired electron. If we have one unpaired electron, that's characteristic of a doublet. Why do we call it a doublet? Because we only have one unpaired spin. So, you know, the paired ones were plus one half, minus one half, plus one half, minus one half. That all cancels out. We're left with what's left in both cases is just a plus one half. So that's going to be two times one half, S equals one half, uh, plus one. <clears throat> Sorry about that plus one, which is equal to two, which is why we, have, we call a spin multiplicity of two, um, or we call it a doublet, okay? So let's just explain why we have a doublet here. Now let's go and look. Uh, so, so what that means is our ground state is a doublet T2G for the D5 octahedral case. We have to add the G because grata for octahedral and ground state is just doublet T2 we don't have the G because there's no inversion, no garata or ungarata in uh, tetrahedral. Now, we're looking for spin allowed transitions. So we're looking for other doublets. We have a doublet T2 as our ground state. Our first um, doublet here is our doublet, um, our doublet A2 and our doublet T1. Those are both um, similar in energy here. They're, they're very similar in energy. Um, they actually have the same energy, but they're both coming from this doublet I. Okay, so we're gonna write uh, two spin allowed transitions here. We're going from our ground state, doublet uh, T2G to doublet T1. And then we also have our, another one, doublet T2G goes to doublet A2. And here we write the same thing, but we drop the, um, oops, we drop the Gs. Doublet T2 to doublet A2. Next one, we look for our next doublet, which is a doublet E. And I drew this as the same position here because we're talking about one complex, it's gonna have the same ligands, so it's gonna have the same delta, right? So um, the same delta O or delta delta uh, uh, T. Delta T2G is still our ground state for octahedral, but we're going to now delta EG. Just got that from here. Here were our two red ones with the same energy. And here we just drop the Gs for the octahedral side. Okay, and then we have a doublet A one up here. And so that's going to be our fourth peak. It's going to be higher in energy. And we have to actually look at what line it's coming from. It gets confusing here. This diagram is nice. It tells you um, double at four. So if you draw trace this line back, it's coming from the G quartet. We had a quartet here and a quartet here. So you know that those um, go together. We don't want a quartet. We need to keep our spin the same to be spin allowed by our um, selection rules. Doublets to doublets are the spin allowed ones. Those are the most intense transitions, with the highest molar extinction coefficients. Those are the ones we're looking for. So we're not looking for this doublet. Um, it, it has G here and this one has D just to show you where it's coming from because uh, it can be hard when it's all black and white. So this one's coming from quartet D. 
So if you're wondering why there's those parentheses there, it's meant to help you. Um, but we're looking for something that's coming from a doublet. And so you can see where that's coming from is right here. This line is going up over and then coming around to the doublet that's there in the free ion term. So we're good. That's the doublet um, A1G. So we go from the ground state, this guy right here, doublet T2G, to doublet uh, A1G for octahedral. And here it's doublet T2, just drop the Gs, and doublet A1. And that's basically it. We uh, don't have any more doublets, so we don't have any more spin allowed transitions. So for both D5 octahedral and D5 tetrahedral complexes that are low spin, remember we're talking about low spin complexes here, um, you are going to have one, you're expecting to have one, two, three, four, four main peaks. Now, will you see those four peaks in your um, diagram? In your, um, you know, electronic absorption spectrum, your UV biz ultraviolet uh, visible spectrum. If they show up on the spectrometer, if they're in the right wavelength, some of these might be too high in energy to show up. But in theory, if you could do the experiment right and access those wavelengths, right, in your, your experiment, you would get uh, four main peaks here.